Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're talking Starlink. There is a whole bunch of content coming to this channel all about Starlink, some 4G failovers and a whole bunch of other content testing gaming, general performance of Starlink and if it's actually worth it in Australia in a more metropolitan setting. Is it going to beat your NBN? Is it better than your NBN? Depending on what you're after, it just might be. So, big thanks to NetVault for sponsoring this video series. We will actually be reviewing their 4G failover system and obviously stay tuned for that video, so subscribe and like to be notified. But NetVault will take care of all your internet, telephony and cloud needs. Links below for their website if you're a small, medium or large business, these guys are for you and they cover all of Australia. Make sure to check those links there. So let's get started by setting up Starlink, checking and testing some speeds and just talking about the value and I guess the technical specifications of this device. Let's roll the intro. Well, first of all, we have to start with what's in the box. This is the Starlink Satellite Internet Gen 2. What's the difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2? Well, there are a couple of small differences, but the big one is the actual dish is not round. It's not really a dish anymore. It's rectangular. So this is the version that we have here. It is also faster, more capable, and much quicker to connect to the satellites. Now, uh, without going into too much detail, because I do want to do a separate video on how Starlink actually works, today we're just going to give a bit of what I would call the elevator pitch. Starlink connects to a whole bunch of low Earth orbit satellites that are surrounding the planet. Obviously, sent out there into space by SpaceX. There's their logo, it's an Elon Musk venture. And so that means that this technology is very unique. It's very new so far. And there's only one other company trying to do the same thing and that's Amazon. So right now there really isn't much options for people who are in need of very fast internet at a reasonable cost in rural areas that don't necessarily have access to the NBN. What it comes with is, is this ethernet cable. And the reason it comes with that is because we get a little adapter and that's not something that comes standard with these Starlinks. We have the stand, solid metal, some sort of alloy metal, I guess. We have screw holes in the sides here to mount it. You want this mounted on a high point in your home or if you're out in a farm, maybe on a pole or again, on a pole on your home. You don't want any obstructions, no trees and things like that. And we'll talk about the obstructions in a second because the app that Starlink has actually helps you find a great location for your device. So you just use it to scan the sky. Here we have the actual dish. As mentioned, it is rectangular. And on the back, we have a post. It clips into the bottom of this and we'll just clip it in. Why not? There is a little, I guess, space here that goes right here and there's a button that clips it in. Okay. And as mentioned, this is the Gen 2 version. It actually is motorized. It moves around and obviously sort of, I guess, vertically, you would call it. There is a couple of interesting features that have been thought about specifically about the weather. This is IP54 rated, so you can have it outside. It can be rained on. The cable itself, which I will dig up in a second, it is very, very long. So just give me a, oh, there we go. We have a very long cable, so you can mount this on a roof and run it out. I believe this is the 150 foot cable. I haven't measured it, but it does also come with a 75 foot and 150 foot that you can get. It is connected directly into the dish and it is a proprietary connection with a little rubber grommet here for sealing the connection into the weather. So even if water sort of leaks down through it, it won't go into the device that it is getting connected to. The other cool thing that I've found out about is if you are in areas that get really, really cold, potentially Victoria, I know there's snow over there. This has the ability to ramp up to 150 watts to actually use the coils that are inside here to warm up and melt away any potential ice or snow that's on top of it to make sure it's in nominal order. Now to connect, it does have a router. This router right here that I think is awesome. It's got a really cool logo, obviously the SpaceX logo that launches all the satellites. This logo is the, I believe that is Mars, the orbit of Mars, and I really like it. I think it looks cool. And on the back, we have a connection for power and obviously this plug right here that pops into here. And that's really it. That's your Wi-Fi router. That's what you connect to with your phone for the actual internet access. This runs the smarts over here, obviously, and it does all the connectivity for you. 
Now, you might be asking, wait, what if I want to plug in a router? Well, if you do want to do that, SpaceX, Starlink has taken the approach of basically Apple. They provide you the ability to pay a little bit more and purchase an adapter. This is the power cable and we have the adapter right here. So obviously power cable, proprietary, but it is a three prong, but it's got the little rubber grommet for weather protection. And same with here, we have the extension to plug into the router and then the same bit goes into here. And what we get out of here is an ethernet port. So if you wanna go beyond just the Wi-Fi that comes with this, it's not Wi-Fi 6, it's not fancy Wi-Fi, it'll get the job done. But if you wanna go further, you have an ethernet connection here to extend that to maybe your own mesh network or something like that. So this is, uh, look, I would recommend getting this. I think it's a really good purchase. And at the end of the day, I think most people would like something like this to extend it all over the home, especially if this sits maybe, you know, further away than the home. Maybe you're running this between some trees that are, you know, down your property and you've got it on a post, but highly recommend it. Okay, so that's, that's it. That's all you get in the box. And to be honest, I, I do like that. At the end of the day, Potentially, this is being given to people that aren't technologically savvy, but still need internet access for their day-to-day -day life. So I imagine people working at a farm, I imagine people in rural areas that don't have access to the NBN. And of course, the price. So this is $140 a month for basically unlimited data, but up to one terabyte of data on priority, which is kind of weird, but it only happened recently. People have been abusing the unlimited data part of this. So it is technically one terabyte. If you are like me and you are using NBN and I've got a good speed on there, 100 megabits down and about 35, 38 up, then I only use about 900 gigs a month. So to be honest, that, that's me, you know, power user, I think you'll be absolutely fine with the priority of under one terabyte for this. The device is on sale right now. If you log into the Starlink website, you'll see that it is on sale and the price is $450 for the hardware Gen 2, you can't buy Gen 1. And then on top, you actually then pay the subscription. Now, one thing I wanna talk about is the build quality. It is really, really good, and it does cost Starlink about 1,500 American dollars per unit like this. So I know you're paying 450 for this, but it's 1,500 American dollars for manufacturing this. So that's quite incredible. And that's Gen 2, Gen 1 was $3,000. So a lot of the changes that have happened here is to reduce the cost. Where they make up the money is in that subscription. It is also month to month. There's no contracts you can cancel any time. And there are other solutions other than this. There is a marine version. There's a one for your RV. There's a whole bunch of ones, but we're talking about the home version. And once you purchase this, it'll only work in the suburb that you've purchased it in, as in the cell that it is. So about 25 kilometers or 20 kilometers each way. So let's actually just connect a few bits and let's get started. We have to go install the app, the Starlink app, both iOS and Android. And of course we have to put this in a place that is going to be appropriate for a dish. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put this up on my roof, I guess, and try and hold it down with some temporary things. Let's get started with that. So we're out in the backyard and we're gonna use the app to find the optimal location. I'm expecting it to be mounted somewhere on the roof, but we've also got some palms out here. So we're gonna to have to run the app. So we're gonna go on the roof. That's probably the best way to do it because of the palms. And then we're gonna use the app to scan. In the app, find select location, and then you'll be able to start scanning the sky. And this is quite a cool little nifty thing. You just stand in a spot and you can scan around. As you can see, there are some palms in the way and it will actually tell us that the palms are there in the results. And so this first location I was on my roof was actually not going to work. There is quite a bit of red actually. And so if I try it again in a different location further up on the roof, you can see that the palms are barely in the way and it leaves us with a very slight red area just on that little bottom there, which will be absolutely enough. If you can't move it around, then this will do very well. Okay, I think I found the best spot and that is right here at the tip of my roof. There's no trees all the way around, except a few palms right at the edge of the scan as you saw in the red. And I think that'll actually be probably enough. So we'll go here. So we've got the base right here. It has those screw holes right there. And what we're going to do is gonna take a bit of old four by two, got two pieces and we're gonna screw them onto here. Obviously this side will have it and one will here and one there and the way we're going to do it to protect this metal So we don't scratch it because well actually I have to give this back We're gonna put these little rubber things 
onto the screw. And I know these screws are for tin, but it's just the ones I have lying around. And they already have a little bit of a rubber grommet here. So we're gonna put that through here and we're gonna screw it straight into there. And then we're gonna put a couple of bricks on each side to hold it down so it doesn't move. Now remember, this is only temporary. If you have to, you'd have to do it. But if you don't, make sure to purchase one of the accessories from Starlink. And of course, uh, you can mount it on a post or to the side of the house on a post. There's all these adapters that you can do. And if you are purchasing this from NetVault, who can supply and install this, they'll do all that for you and they'll set it all up. Here we go, first one in, right at the end. Right as the rubber gets a bit squished, no scratching at all. There we go, perfect. And we'll do the rest. All right, we have a solution that's gonna go on the roof and yeah, let's get it up there. There we go, that should do it. I originally thought bricks, but pavers, pavers my friends, are much heavier and hopefully the Perth wind won't blow the satellite away. So let's get those up on to the roof. With that, it's done and I don't think it's going anywhere. This is pretty solid and it's a good thing. The wind is definitely picking up now. So let's get the dish connected and then we're gonna run the cable into it and already ready to go roof space here. It's like doing a bit of mountaineering with the amount of cable I have here. One-handed operation, but we're here ready to go. Like shown before, there's a little gap here that goes right in there. So the dish is gonna be pointing out to this side and it's just a little click that makes it go in. There we go. Dishy is in. Let's, uh, let's run this cable now because that's gonna be the fun part. Okay, there it is. The cable runs through into the gutter. So any drips or water goes straight down into there and it goes under this tile and into the hall, into the lounge room and the whole cable's down there so we can stretch it out as far as we need to. So we're in the house now, in the lounge. Hidden behind here is a hole that goes straight up into the ceiling and into that space that you saw just before. So we've got the cable down here, we've got both the power and the satellite cable and we've got our router right here. It's going to sit here because it is an important art piece. It actually looks quite nice, right? You have to admit, it does look like it's meant to be in a spot that's visible to everyone. So don't hide it in a cupboard. Come on guys, it looks great. I have a router hidden under here, the mesh system from, from Macusis. If you wanna see that video, check the links below. Really, really cool mesh system for your whole home. And it does have a gigabit ethernet port that does connect to the rest of the mesh that I'm going to actually utilize with this for my testing at home. I'm gonna try and live off Starlink for at least a month and see how that goes. So we have the adapter here. This is the adapter for the ethernet. You do not get an ethernet port in the router like you did in gen one. So the first thing we're going to do is grab the satellite cable and we're gonna pop it into here. And again, it should go in really easily. And now you have your ethernet out. We're gonna pop this into the cable here and it should go in very, very easily. And lastly, we have the power, which again, will pop in hopefully easily. There it is. And yep, there it is, it's on. So the first thing we're gonna have to do to actually, well, there's no buttons to press, there's no reset button anywhere, which is kind of interesting. You just gotta, you know, cycle the power. We're gonna get the app connected and let's see the setup. And we're gonna choose our dish. The dish we have here is the Gen 2, so we're gonna choose this one right here on the left top side. We're gonna confirm. It does have, obviously, power, so I have a location. We've plugged it in, yes. And we're gonna go open to Wi-Fi settings and we're gonna, we're gonna go to Wi-Fi and we wanna find the Starlink connection. Once you've selected the Starlink Wi-Fi, you go through the configuration and set up a Wi-Fi name, password, and then you'll be able to connect it through your phone. You've obviously got to create a Starlink account, which you would have created when you've actually ordered that device. You log into there and you'll be able to do and change a lot of settings. When you are finished, you end up on this screen right here, and that means your Starlink is online. It'll take around 20 minutes for it to connect and sync up with a satellite. What you see here is a little bit different. You'll see some things blanked out. Please ignore that. I'm using an enterprise deployment with Starlink. So there's a few things I cannot actually access, but have to access through a Fortinet system and talk about that in the full review of this solution. Right now, we just wanna talk about Starlink. And I think the most important thing is the speed test. So it really depends on time of day. It depends on where the satellite is at the time, but we're just gonna press speed and it's gonna run a quick speed test. 
Now, obviously these speeds really, really depend. It can go up to 300 megabits a second. I saw 150 about 20 minutes ago. Now it's 38 and 12. Some more highlights about the app. It has some really interesting monitoring information. They call it network statistics. In this case, we've got uptime and outages. Right now we're pretty much cruising along 99 to 100%. And this is purely between the time it has to reconnect to another satellite. There is sometimes a couple of seconds of outage. It says here last hour possibly obstructed for 19 seconds and there was a network issue for 14 seconds. At any point it could have been the palms that we saw before or something like that. The latency has been around a minimum of 60 and on average 65 with a max of 173. This is a fantastic latency. I don't think anybody realizes that's amazing for satellite internet. That's absolutely incredible. And of course Elon Musk has been saying that he's going to get that even lower. We'll see about that. There is still some travel time in between. And our speeds have been ranging from about 250 to about zero. It just sort of shows you the range of it. And so if I turn on, you know, I turn on the downloader, it'll start blasting through and using up those gigs and should give us a nice spike. Now to do some proper speed tests, we really need to do it via ethernet, the gigabit port that's in here on the adapter connected to a computer. And we need to do it via Okla speed test because Hey, if everybody's using it, then everybody thinks that's the speed that you actually get. So let's see some real world speeds right now. I've just run into speed test here. I'm just gonna quickly refresh the page and I'm just gonna check that we've got one gigabit. Yep, so gigabit connected via the single Cat6 cable running to the Starlink unit. It's not too far, it's about a couple of meters. So we're gonna press go on here and we're gonna see what we get. Now obviously the ping is should be around 60 to 70. As you saw on the app, it was 65. So I'm expecting this one to be, oh, it's a bit high at 104. Let's have a look at the download. What are we hitting? We're going 103, 110, 120, 130, 135. 120, 126, okay, that's, I mean, look, my home connection right now is 100, so about 98 from NBN, and I'm paying $100 a month, actually $110, because it's the 100 down, 40 up, and I'm getting here with $140, it's 127 down with eight megabits up. That's not a bad speed, I'm just gonna run it again, because the thing with Starlink, it is wireless, right? It's wireless internet, and sometimes you can get a really good go of it. So I'm gonna press go again. Maybe this time we'll get a better ping. I'm really keen to see about 150. I made a short on YouTube of 150 before. That was awesome to see. Here we go, 120, one, ooh, 130, yep, 126. Okay, that seems to be a good average so far. We've got 70 ping and I'm pretty happy with that. Now the upload is probably the only thing that always concerns me. I talk about it being important. In this case, we've got 12, and unless you're streaming gaming content, I think you will be all right. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Huge thanks to NetVault for sponsoring this video. Check out the services below if you're looking for cloud, telephony, internet, they are the go-to people. They can also provide a Starlink with a 4G failover setup for your at home business or your business or a location that requires internet 24 seven. As shown before, Starlink does have little dropouts and if you don't wanna lose internet, you will need that failover 4G system that they provide. We're gonna be doing a full video on that very soon. But some final thoughts about Starlink so far. I'm very impressed. It is wireless satellite internet and of course it means that it's you know, it's coming from the sky. Yeah, it's low Earth orbit, but it's still further than I can really see unless it's at night and you can see those satellites passing by. It took about half an hour to set up and of course it costs quite a bit. But the speeds that I'm able to get at 120 down average megabits a second and about between five to 13 to 15 megabits a second upload at my location in Perth, I think that's pretty darn good. If you're in a location in Metro that has low speed internet, then this could be a solution for you. But I just don't see it as a Metro solution unless you're in a rural area or potentially a new build that you just need a temporary solution like I did a couple of years ago when I moved uh, houses, there was no internet for nearly six months. This would have been absolutely fantastic. Instead, I was stuck on a 4G dongle. It was 
horrible. In any case, let's continue doing videos about this. Upcoming videos are going to be gaming related. Can you game on Starlink? Can you upload a video on Starlink? And of course, day-to-day -day usage. You're going to give basically a few full review of the Starlink system. Friends, thank you very much for watching again. Make sure to like this video if you did. Subscribe and check out the links below for NetVault's solution. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!